Thank you very much indeed for waiting. Now we are going to start a press conference to announce the 2016 Kyoto Prize laureates. Thank you very much indeed for coming today, despite your busy schedule. Let me introduce myself. I am Kataoka from Inamori Foundation. It's my great honor. First, let me introduce the members for today's press conference. From your left, Chair of the Kyoto Prize Executive Committee and Professor Emeritus of Kyoto University, Professor Shigetada Nakanishi. Next to him is the Chair of the Selection Committee in Advanced Technology, Director General of National Institute of Informatics, Research Organization of Information and Systems, Director General Masaru Kitsuregawa. Next to him is the Chair of the Kyoto Prize Committee of Basic Sciences, Director of Medical Innovation Center, Graduate School of Medicine, Kyoto University, Professor Shu Narumiya. Lastly, Chair of Kyoto Prize Committee for Arts and Philosophy, Chairperson of the Board and President of Kyoto City University of Arts, Professor Kiyokazu Washida. Now, this press conference is broadcasted on live with YouTube Live, and this evening, this will be uploaded to the homepage of our foundation. With the two languages of Japanese and English, all the people in the world will be able to watch it. Now, first, you would like to call upon Chair of Kyoto Prize Executive Committee, Professor Nakanishi, who is going to announce the three laureates for this year, followed by the detailed achievements for each of the laureates. Q&A session will be held in the end. I ask for your kind cooperation. Now, Chair Professor Nakanishi, please. I will now announce the laureates. 2016 Kyoto Prize laureate for advanced technology in the prize field of information science goes to Japanese national Dr. Takeo Kanade, age 70, roboticist. Dr. Kanade is Whitaker University professor, Carnegie Mellon University. He is awarded for pioneering contributions, both technical and practical, to computer vision and robots. Next is the laureates for basic science in the prize field of life science namely molecular biology, cell biology, neurobiology, goes to Dr. Tasuku Honjo, Japanese national, age 74, medical scientist. Dr. Honjo is professor emeritus of Kyoto University. He's awarded prize for discovery of the mechanism responsible for functional diversification of antibodies, immunoregulatory molecules, and clinical application of PD-1. Finally, the laureates for arts and philosophy in the prize field of thoughts and ethics is Dr. Martha Craven Nussbaum, the U.S. citizen, age 69, philosopher. Dr. Nussbaum is Ernst Freund Distinguished Service Professor of Law and Ethics, the University of Skago. She is awarded for development and practice of new theory of justice advocating capabilities approach. These three are the laureates of Kyoto Plus this year. They are all very well and active. And this year, again, for many researchers and professors, our philosopher have been recommended and nominated. And after the strict screening, 
these the excellent people has been awarded and as a chair of Kyoto Prize Executive Committee, I am very honored and I'm very happy to announce to you. Thank you very much. In the uh, later, we are going to invite the Dr. Tasuku Honjo, who is the laureate of the basic science, to entertain the questions from the floor. Now let me move on to the explanation of the achievements of each laureate. First, we will call upon Chairman Kitsuregawa to explain the achievements of Dr. Takeo Kanade, laureate in advanced technology. Now slides are going to be used. Please look at first slide. Now, Chairman Kitsuregawa, please. Thank you. Dr. Kanade is a researcher active in front line in the field of computer vision. Computer vision may not be so familiar to all the people. Therefore, let me explain on computer vision. When we human beings recognize information surrounding us, we greatly depend on visual information. We say seeing is believing. Exactly this demonstrates this phenomena. Just like that, computers and robots also obtain information from camera for object recognition, which enables various functions. But how computers recognize outer world through image information? That research is the field of computer vision. Dr. Kanade has made various great contributions in this field. We, for human beings, are not conscious when we process visual information. It seems natural, but for example, think about this cat. A real cat is three-dimensional, but image taken with camera is two-dimensional. And for computers, those are mere 2D collection of data of the pixel with RGB numbers. And while the cat is like, or how cat is moving should be recognized with the algorithm. Basic theory, as well as the applied technology, is very important in computer vision. Dr. Kanade made contributions both theoretical and practical in this field. First, let me explain on his theoretical contributions. When we handle video or stereo images by detecting corresponding points in similar images, it is possible to compress motion pictures, track objects, and have stereopsis. What we need here is the method to efficiently detect corresponding relationships. Numerical analysis on singular value should be used for domain to be deleted, which feature points should be tracked. That was the fundamental theory, and Dr. Kanade made the great contribution. This is the Lucas Kanade method that Dr. Kanade jointly established. Dr. Kanade made his assumption that changes between the images are smooth. By comparing correspondent points from its local neighborhood, Dr. Kanade made it possible to gradually get closer to correct answers. This method is called the Lucas Kanade method. In the case of video images, he estimated the correspondence between nearby frames in calculation. By so doing, he realized moving objects to be tracked. Here is the motion pictures. Like this, the feature points of the object is moving, and that is analyzed with the optical flow. The fundamental method was established by Dr. Kanade. 
He also proposed Tomasi Kanade factorization, which can estimate both structure and motion of original 3D object by using singular value decomposition towards each feature points in video frames. Like this, as you can see, 3D reconstruction of a real building can be done without being hampered by camera motions. This noise-robust method laid the foundation for various 3D reconstruction methods developed later. Dr. Kanade has made a remarkable contribution, not only in theoretical arena, but also for applied technology. For example, although automated driving is a today's hot topic, Dr. Kanade was the one of the first to participate in the very first phase of development of automated driving technology. In 1995, his team carried out successfully a demonstration called No Hands Across America, driving across North American continent. It was a remarkable contribution in this initial phase. Based on his research, of computer vision, he created an artificial intelligence system capable of sensing freeway lanes and avoiding obstacles. He made another contribution which has been paid great attention, that is virtualized reality. Many cameras were placed and installed surrounding a stadium, taking pictures in synchronized manner, which allow objects to be viewed from any angle of 360 degree. This is called eye vision. This way, view angle can be changed freely. This was first demonstrated not in baseball, but in the 35th Super Bowl in 2001. But today's video that I showed is the one used in Japan immediately after that. It is not virtual reality, making a virtual world not the real one. Dr. Kanade's method is called virtualized reality meaning the visual expression method of real world with virtual synthesis of images. Other than that, Dr. Kanade has made various contributions of elementary technology, face recognition algorithm, or biologist should track their cell development with the microscope, how cells evolve that takes time and labor. But with the image process, cell tracking system was nearly automated, and recently drone is popular, automated technology, and multi-layer display with water drops, with light emitted to water drops and many others. Exciting technologies were developed one after another by Dr. Kanade. Thank you, that's all. Thank you very much. Now, the committee chair of the Professor Nalumia is going to explain about Dr. Tasuku Honjo in basic science. Please look at page five of the handouts. Dr. Honjo is awarded for discovery of the mechanism responsible for functional diversification of antibody, immunoregulatory molecules, and clinical application of PD-1. However, it is very hard to understand the contents from this title. So I'm going to explain. Needless to say, the antibody will protect us from foreign objects, especially from pathogens. And this is protein, which consists of two heavy chains and two light chains. And this side is called FAB fragment. 
and this part is called FC fragment. And there are some mysteries about antibodies. There are three myths. First is there are many different antigens. However, uh, each antibody have the binding site for each antigen. And secondly, there is a class 4 antibody. If you look at the end portion, it is different according to IgG or IgE or IgA. And also, this binding site, after binding is developed, the mutation will occur. The first myth is that antibody will be developed for different antigens, which is called pre-DJ recombination, which was found by Dr. Tonegawa, and he won the Nobel Prize. And the other two mysteries, why different classes are uh, developed and why mutation will occur. Uh, these are still remain unsolved. So what is the class of antibody? Class defines where this antibody goes in our body. For example, this is RGA, and they are found in gut or air tube or digestive tract. And the IgG, which is called universal antibody, can be found everywhere, everywhere in our body. And IgE can be found in skin or mucosa of digest digestive tract. So what does antibody do? This is the bacteria, and this is veils. And by adhering with them, uh, they will prevent us from going into the, uh, the body. And this is the phagocytosis. This will eat the uh, bacteria and degradate. And next, the antibody will activate the complement. And once the bounded object will be broken down. And the other thing is the sensitization of mast cell. In case you have an allergy, this will be activated. So there are many classes of the antibodies, IgM or IgE, IgG, and the distribution in the body is different. And neutralization or opsonization or sensitization of the mast cells or activates complement system. They have these functions. So this is giving the function to the antibodies. Why these classes are made remain unsolved. First, Dr. Honjo has discovered this antibody class is in certain sequence in the gene, and based on this discovery, he has found this will make class switching to, in this case, finally make IgA. Uh, this is the hypothesis he has proposed. So why this class is made has remained unsolved for many years. Dr. Honjo first gave hypothesis in 1978, and after 21 years, he made the, he has found the activation-induced cytidine diminus, which is in short called AID. And AID is an enzyme. And DNA or RNA, one of the base, the citidine, is replaced by origin. And surprisingly, this AID has a function to have the class, switch, class switching of the antibody to make different classes of antibodies. And the other uh, mystery, the mutation of the antibody after being developed 
was solved. So the out of three mysteries, two mysteries has been resolved by him. Dr. Honjo has made numerous works. In 1978, he has proposed class switch recombination, and 21 years later, he has discovered or cloned the AID, and in 2000, he elucidated AID was responsible for CSR and also SHM. And other than that, he has discovered many immunoregulatory molecules, and each one of them are very important, and one of them, PDI, has been applied in medical field already. And first, we didn't know PD-1 is working for what. And when we don't know what this antibody is working, we will produce knockout mouse to see what happens for knockout mouse. And this PD-1 knockout mouse, this is the swollen heart. And this is myocarditis. This means that PD-1 suppresses the overexcitation of immunity. And on the other hand, in case of oncology, when there's a tumor, the immunity is suppressed. And as I said, the PD-1 function can be suppressed to paralyze the tumor function. So he produced PD-1 antibody, which has proven to regress the tumor, and the mouse with the PD-1 survived. Based on this, this is the diagram. As it is shown here, the PD-1, well, when there is a tumor, the tumor cell, in order for them to survive, they will produce a ligand called PD-L1. And normally, the tumor cell will activate the immunocyte. However, this will suppress, which is called escape mechanism. So this escape mechanism can be inhibited by antibody. Then this cytotoxic T lymphocyte can regress tumor. So this is now applied for medical and anti-PD-1 antibody is proven to have an anti-tumor effect. This is, for example, melanoma example. And now you can see the metastasis of melanoma. And after uh, administering PD-1, 13 months, this has been regressed. And this series of his work, normally the tumor cell should increase, but with the antibody administration, many has regressed. So this antibody will harness or release and has the anti-tumor effect. That was what he has proven. I have taken this from the Dr. Honjo's website. He cherishes six Cs, especially curiosity, challenge, and continuation. Regarding this continuation, as I said earlier, in 1979, he has proposed class switch recombination, and after 20 years, he has resolved. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much.
Next, Professor Washida will explain the achievements of Laureate in Arts and Philosophy, Dr. Martha Craven Nussbaum in Arts and Philosophy. Please look at the slide, page 9. Thank you. Now, Laureate in Arts and Philosophy, Laureate Martha Craven Nussbaum will be introduced in my explanation. Dr. Martha Craven Nussbaum was born on May the 6th in 1947 in New York City in the United States. She studied the classics and the philosophy in graduate school at Harvard and received her doctorate with her thesis on Aristotle's De Motu Animalium, Movement of Animals, from Harvard University in 1975. From 1987 to 1993, she was engaged in joint research with noted economist and Nobel Prize laureate Dr. Amartya Sen at the World Institute for Development Economics Research of UN University in Helsinki, focusing on quality of life. This work led to the development of her own version of the capabilities approach. She became a professor teaching earnestly classics, philosophy, and ethics at Brown University and Chicago University. Currently, she is Ernst Freund Distinguished Service Professor of Law and Ethics at the University of Chicago. Achievements of Dr. Nussbaum is listed here. First, developing a new theory of justice advocating the capabilities approach. Next is advocating the need for liberal education and multicultural education, and developing a philosophy of law focusing on emotions. Out of these three, her capabilities approach is most well known. What are capabilities? In Japanese, sensei no roku, that is what each individual is able to do or be. That is each person's potential. Dr. Nussbaum proposed that capabilities should be the criteria for social justice. Presenting deeper thoughts on theory of justice than conventional one. Major objective of conventional theory of justice was the fair distribution of wealth, freedom, rights, and so on, based on the principles of justice agreed and accepted by rational individuals who can be a normal and a fully cooperating member of society over a complete life. However, with this framework, socially vulnerable people or the weak are neglected or overlooked, not sufficiently taken care of as a possibility. What to be achieved in society is the equality of human capabilities. That is what each person is able to do or be, so that each person can unlock their potential and flourish in their socio-political state. That is fundamental insights of Dr. Nussbaum's capabilities approach. Dr. Nussbaum has had a lot of detailed discussion with people with many different cultural backgrounds. Based on her experiences, she listed up a broad set of specific human capabilities as a central requirement of a life with dignity so that people can agree beyond different cultures. That list has been utilized as basic access for debate for gender equality and policy for child welfare and assessment of human development. Also, her list is widely used as materials for human rights education in many countries. Dr. Nussbaum also has cultivated her imaginatory ability towards people with different cultures. She has strongly proposed education of multiculturalism, 
trying to find a way for coexistence and liberal education as a basis for democracy. Also, Dr. Nussbaum has analyzed nature of negative emotions, such as anger, disgust, and shame, and presented her views on the fundamental assumptions on what type of justice system is required. As I stated so far, Dr. Nussbaum has researched social philosophy and ethics to realize good society, and based on that, made a proposal for various social practices. With her strong sense of mission, she has tried to rebuild degraded public sphere and continues to seek a pathway of promoting the harmonious coexistence of different cultures. Thank you, that's all. Thank you very much. This completes the explanation of the laureates. Now I want to address the question from the floor. If you have a question, please raise your hand and please say your name and your company. So please raise your hand if you have a question. The person in front. Thank you. I am Matsuo from Kyoto Shinbun newspaper. I have a question about Dr. Honjo's work. He was awarded for his work uh, in basic science. However, recently, the application of PD-1 in medical field is highlighted. So I would like to ask why he was awarded in basic sciences, not in advanced technology. We are very much aware that the Dr. Honjo's work of PD-1 was highlighted. However, if you look at the process of discovery of PD-1, and also if you consider the nature of the Kyoto Prize, well, we have awarded Dr. Honjo in the basic science. First, he has made a tremendous contribution, contribution to the immunology, not only PD-1, Firstly, the functional diversification of antibodies, which lies as the basic principle in immunology now. And while doing that, as I have explained, he has discovered many important molecules in immunologies, and one of them was PD-1, which has been applied for anti-tumor drug. So he has made a tremendous contribution to immunology, and only one of them was PD-1. Of course, the, we understand PD-1 is making contribution to human health and welfare. However, the process of his discovery of PD-1 was his research as immunologist. And we would like to recognize him, his work as immunologist. And also Kyoto Award, Kyoto Prize, recognized individual and how each individual has made research in lifetime. That's the idea of Kyoto Prize. So he has started from finding some antibodies, and finally he found the big uh, antibodies, which is applied for the medical field. 
That's our understanding. Any other people who have questions? Nobody? Uh, yes, please. Gentleman in front. I'm Hirose from Kyoto newspaper. Question to Professor Washida. Dr. Nussbaum's achievements were explained. She's from the United States. With this timing, why an American doctor is the laureate for Kyoto Prize? Why with this timing, looking at today's situation in the world, could you give us your opinion? You said in your question, with this timing, that expression may include a lot of meaning, I'm afraid to say. What I'm going to reply may not be answering your question. But first thing to say, this subfield of thought and ethics is just once per four years. Therefore, situation in the world of today or last year, those were not included as a criteria for judgment for Kyoto Prize. In this subfield of thoughts and ethics, there are paramount important criteria. Number one, laureate should have very broad perspective or viewpoints. Secondly, she or he should have the long lifespan in contributing to deepening the idea, looking at the human beings, civilization, and society. And also, we are living in today's moments, therefore, for the people living in this world, how much of the practical proposal have been made, or the depth or strength of the commitment. Those are the important criteria. In the case of Dr. Nussbaum, as I explained, together with Dr. Amatia Sen, she deeply researched the concept of development in joint research with Dr. Amatia Sen. Development was regarded as the economic concept, that usually the concept. However, Dr. Nussbaum made a renewed concept. Development is the development of the humane good way of being, or the whole well-being as a person, not necessarily the economic growth. Rather, the true essence of human beings are looked at by Dr. Nussbaum. And that is the modern concept of the development in true way. Different from Dr. Sen, Dr. Nussbaum took a deeper steps into the philosophical dimension. She proposed the capabilities. What type of capabilities are belonging to the human beings? She listed up all those factors, critical thinking, solidarity. Many are used to be called the items for human virtues. And those were often referred to the policy setting in nation states or the societies in today. Her list of the capabilities was proposed at the United Nation, Nation and at the Canadian Assembly for welfare debate capability list was very often referred to. Therefore, in modern era, as I hinted, public sphere is meeting the sense of crisis. Public sphere is degraded. In that setting, her proposal is very critically important. Dr. Washida, you said degraded public sphere. 
What is the specific image? Could you explain more? Yes. For example, in a sense, theory of justice was written by John Rawls, but that was renewed by Dr. Nussbaum. That means that whether justice is really realized to all the people in society, or do all people live like a decent human beings, is that truly realized? Is truly humane life secured as a social consensus in modern days? Dr. Nussbaum herself may not use this word of the degraded public sphere. However, the middle class are now divided by polarization is the phenomena that means the poor and the rich alone or disabled people, children, or vulnerable people are not secured for humane life or not protected at all. For those modern days phenomena, she presented the sense of crisis. And I think that that is equal to the expression of the degraded public sphere. That means in Japan also we have the same sense of crisis in Japan. And Dr. Nussbaum is suggesting the same sense of crisis? Yes. Now question about Dr. Kanade. Dr. Kanade has involved in many fields in his broad spectrum of contributions, but the basic fundamental principle is only one. There are many, but they are linked and converged into one, or he has made different contributions in different subfields. Let me respond. Dr. Kanade is now 70 year old. He is a pioneer starting computer vision research. In those days, computer did not have at all the power to process the visual information. From that point of view, what I explained in the achievements are the fundamental principles that he contributed. But other than that, of course, he made various basic elementary technologies. But most influential ones are, as stated, Lucas Kanade method and the Tomasi Kanade method. If we ask any of the vision process authorities, those two discoveries of the principles are the masterpieces. Thank you. Now, Lucas Kanade and another one, Tomasi Kanade, the, based on these two methods, automated driving or the drone driving or baseball broadcasting, always those two are the fundamental technologies. In recent IT solution, we cannot necessarily identify only one single elementary solution. There are multiple, many solutions integrated, but Lucas Kanade, Tomasi Kanade are the fundamental one commonly used. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other questions? Now, gentlemen in the back. I am Molly from Chunichi newspaper. Thank you very much for invitation today. I'd like to ask Dr. Nakanishi, I believe that you are very close friends with Dr. Honjo, and today he has been awarded such a huge prize. And what kind of characters, characteristics, or potential does Honjo have in order to be such successful? Well, let me mention the fact first. I am the chair of this prize, and which 
is not irrelevant from the fact that we are friends. However, I was a classmate with him of medical school of Kyoto University. So since we were 18 and until now 74, we don't know uh, which was close to him uh, or uh, he but we have been a good friends. The, his becoming laureates. Well, of course, during the selection process, I have been quite uh, taking uh, pay care. But this Kyoto Prize will recognize somebody's work when he has committed his whole life to something and as a result he or she made tremendous contribution to society. I think this is the basic idea of Kyoto Prize. So as Dr. Narumiya explained earlier, Dr. Honjo was consistently making research in immunology and discovered mechanism in bodies. And at first, he didn't have any clue or he wasn't have any clear idea, but finally he resolved after 20 years. So as he has written the, in the, his website, the persistent continuation is excellent with him. So I have been always impressed by him. So that's why, well, of course, the impact of the discovery of PD-1 or PD-1L to society is significant. But not only that, the idea of Kyoto Prize well, some result which has been produced by one individual concentrating his uh, life in one purpose. That is something which is impressive about him. Do you have any uh, episode with Dr. Honjo? There are many episodes with him. For example, the class switch work that was explained earlier. The first result, he has considered that some gene has to be missing, which is quite bold in the research at the time. However, uh, what he is excellent about is not only he proposed something, but also he has proven, he has taken all the genes and he has proven the exactly those parts are missing. And not only proposing a theory, he continued to elucidate, spending five to ten years. That is his most impressive part. And what is very interesting about him is he said the result of science will become meaningful only when it is recognized globally. And he has been consistently believing that. And finally, after more than 20 years, he became he has proved true result. This is aligned with the idea of Kyoto Prize. 
That's how I look at him. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Now, other person in belly front. I'm Halimo from NHK. Professor Washida, just one technical question. It may be capability is translated in Japanese as sensei no ryoku. But we have popular words of senzai no ryoku or latent possibility. What do you think? Well, among the members in whole selection organization, we had quite a difficulties how to translate capabilities. But one reason is that she published books, six or seven books in Japanese also, and translation for capabilities has kanoryoku, that is enabling strength or potential strength. In academic society, a philosophy, kanoryoku, or enabling strength, may be the consensus. But that word is not used in day-to-day -day use. Therefore, we try to find another word. Together with Dr. Sen, Dr. Nussbaum established the concept of development. However, philosophically, she further delved into it. And Aristotle stated dynamis, which is the counterpart for energeia. Dynamis is the potential, kanotai, or possible force. And energeia is the enabled result. For example, if there is a beautiful flower, the buds are dynamis. It's not flower to be flourished yet. However, there is a potential to move to flower. And the flower flourished is the reality or enabled potential. Therefore, even not yet flourished, however, there is a fresh force to flourish in future. Therefore, that force of potential is in existence. That is sensei tai or kanoryoku or dunasis, as opposed to gensei tai, that is already realized potential. Dunamis has the possibility to be developed in future. Because she's a philosopher, therefore, we used sensei instead of senzai. Senzai sometimes used to mean latent possibility, suppressed or hidden possibility. Therefore, we wanted to distinguish those. But in order to understand it easily for ordinary people, how about the senzai noryoku, latent possibility? Well, that's difficult because all the academia people, well, they have the society with the kanoryoku in Japanese for capabilities, enabling strength or potential strength. Therefore, it's difficult to use latent possibility or senzai. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, I would like to address one more question. I am Nishikawa from Sankei newspaper. I'd like to confirm about selection process. During the process of the selection of these three laureates, I think, can you uh, please tell us whose selection was rather relatively smooth or whose are uh, relatively not so smooth. Well, not only this time, but we have three different levels of committee of Kyoto Prize. The first stage is the Kyoto Prize Selection Committee, and secondly, Kyoto Prize Committee, and finally, we have Kyoto Prize Executive Committees. And the selection committee we have held fourth, and Kyoto Prize committee twice, and we have had a Kyoto Prize executive committee only once. 
and we gave order to the each uh, person who are nominated. And again, we made sure not only among people who are nominated, but also we made sure if there was somebody who is can be candidate outside, and as the total agreement of the eight members of the committee, well, we have actually minutes of meeting which are quite long. And in the course of such a process, we think our process was quite rigid. Like this time, the two Japanese national was included in three, and we discussed if this is too many. But basically, we have discussed if each laureate is appropriate for the idea of the Kyoto Prize or the each its lifestyle itself can be recognized or making some contribution to society. And as uh, earlier discussed, the chair and one laureate were uh, friends and we are aware and we have been very careful about that. But I try to be objective for the discussion of the others. So I want to say that these three laureates were selected in accordance with ideas of Kyoto Prize these three laureates of this year. So this year, the, there are two Japanese nationals, which is uh, relatively more than average years. Of course, we discussed, because this is international award. However, Dr. Kanade has mainly studied in the United States. And in the past, Dr. Kanamori, who studied earthquakes, uh, who stayed in the States, or the other, uh, those two were the laureates in some year, and we have considered those cases to make sure if these laureates were in accordance with the idea of the Kyoto Prize, and they were happen to be Japanese. Two of them happen to be Japanese. That was our selection process in the committee. Thank you very much. Now we are ready. We'd like to invite Dr. Tasuku Honjo. Let me introduce again the laureates of basic scientists of the 32nd Kyoto Prize, Dr. Tasuku Honjo. Thank you very much for participating in your busy schedule. And we are so honored to have the opportunity to introduce one of the laureates. Now I'd like to ask how you feel about receiving this prize. Please remain seated, but please give us some word. Thank you for kind introduction. As the 32nd awardee of the Kyoto Prize, as Chair Dr. Narumiya introduced, and also the Chair Dr. Nakanishi introduced. Well, I am so honored for their unearned appreciation. I've been doing research for so many years, 
However, as a result, when I look back, I think I have been always leading a very exciting life, and I believe I am very fortunate. And recently, the antibody PD-1 will make, is now applied for the tumor treatment, which made myself quite meaningful. And in addition to that, I'm recognized in this kind of opportunity, which came as a bonus, and I'm so honored about this prize. Thank you very much. Now I would like to entertain your questions from floor. Please raise your hand when you have a question, and please say your name and company. I am Hirose from Kyoto Shinbu newspaper. Uh, congratulations, Dr. Honjo. I have a couple of questions. First is the class stitch uh, recombination and PD-1. And as Dr. mentioned, this PD-1 has already started to see some result, and now it's even going broader. And how much potential do you see from this PD-1 in going forward? Well, as you may know, the PD-1 has an indication for melanoma and lung cancer and renal cancer and Hodgkin lymphoma uh, in the United States. And there are 200 clinical studies going on globally. And I hope that this will be has, has an indication for all type of cancers in the future. However, it is almost uh, evident that the PD-1 cannot treat all patients. The new scientist, a British science journal, wrote recently, which I thought makes sense for me, is the discovery of PD-1, the application for the cancer is similar to the discovery of penicillin for infectious disease in the sense that this has fundamentally changed the treatment in the past. However, this doesn't cure all type of cancers. However, by the discovery of the penicillin, new antibiotics were found one after another, and eventually all the infectious disease was cured. So this is almost the beginning of the uh, end of the cancer treatment. So what is required now is to develop this research further in the future, and we may found new uh, mechanism or centering around the activation of immunoregulatory system. We have to continue making research. This is my strong belief for the patients who are not yet saved by PD-1. Well, as Dr. Narumiya explained, you have spent quite a long time starting from cross switch recombination. It's almost 30 years, and you have found PD-1 in the meantime. So the basic science becomes the application, takes a lot of time. So what's the meaning of the this continuous importance of consistency? Well, if you do work in the basic science, then it is quite rare uh, that you can find something that can be applied in the applied science. There are many excellent researchers 
much more uh, excellent researchers than me. However, we need a good luck in order to find something which can be applied in advanced science. And we don't know what can be applied for the advanced science in life science. It's almost like a gambling. So you have to place your chip in many different areas. The services for the government has to be spent more for the basic science. And after making research of 1,000 or 2,000, then we may have found one or two meaningful findings. So we have to take a long-term view. And uh, even though you don't see some meaning in the uh, current society, but still you have to see the importance of continuing. So now PD-1 sees some result or application already. However, although we have some seen some result, what are the issues in current status? Like the maybe one is the NHI price, the three million yen for one month may be too expensive. Or some says that we don't know uh, PD1 works for which type of people. For these feedbacks or comments, what's your take? First, the, if the drug, some drug is expensive or not expensive, I'm not in the position of making my statement. However, the uh, background of this judgment, well, when I read in magazines, Often writers are not uh, I, writers are not the one who have really tried this treatment, or who has read my paper. The reason that I thought so is, like they say, that the PD-1 has to be used for a long time, which is wrong. In 2012, uh, if you can see the slide used by Dr. Uh, Narumiya, well, uh, this PD-1 has been administered for six months. And if the tumor is not growing, this means that this uh, is working. So normally, the tumor will glow after six months. So we know after six months if we can continue or not. And even if it's working, you can still drop. In the uh, Dr. Narumiya's drawing, there is a dotted line, vertical dotted line, where a patient stopped. But even if they stop, it will keep working for at least two years. And without studying those facts, these uh, people are making uh, comments. Of course, we don't know uh, until if until we try. So the one big issue is trying to identify the marker uh, even before starting the treatment. And this is where uh, global researchers is working on. However, as I mentioned earlier, the penicillin doesn't cure all disease. That doesn't mean penicillin is useless. This is how I take. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Gentleman in the second row, please. I'm Takada from Nikkei. Cross switch mechanism was elucidated, and the PD1 does the breaking mechanism in immune system. Were the two great epoch making discoveries, those are the ones that you achieved. That's quite rare. You made two, well, precisely speaking, more than two, but you made the astonishing two discoveries in your research. What is your attitude leading to these great discoveries? What is your attitude? Well, first of all, we have to reach out our hands to many, many things. Otherwise, we cannot get any chances. 
I had a broad spectrum of curiosities to start with. And in fact, honestly speaking, I had more failures of projects. I touched upon many projects, and at least two of them got the good unfolded success in the end. Well, many researchers studied many researchers and all got successful in the past, but some started with many projects and concentrated on one. Well, in our lives, luck is the big factor, but in my case, I think that it's right to say that I was very tenacious. I kept doing things persistently. One more question related to that. US one of C is continuity, so keep doing the same thing. Is that required? Yes. Human beings have the limited ability. It's impossible to continue every researches. However, to some degree, we should take some time in doing those researches. And if we can deepen our understanding, usually we feel fun as a result. As a result, we find quite interest. May I? Nakanishi is speaking. Well, Dr. Honjo has the true eye to distinguish the true essence. He's so strict on himself. However, what are the issues? What are the main points? He is always thinking about that. I was always together with him, and I received a great stimulus. Because he is strictly distinguishing the truth, therefore, success probability is higher in his case. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes? Abe from Sankei newspaper. Doctor, you used the word of luck. Well, with good luck, compound or antibody can be developed as a drug, and that requires encounterment or meeting with the pharmaceutical companies. That is my question. In today's world, academia and the industries are having the alliances. However, what type of things do you expect industry so that researchers can make the great contribution? You mentioned about the governmental subsidiary research grant, but any opinions or constructive ideas or industry? Well, when you say industry, industry that Dr. Kitsuregawa is involved and pharmaceutical industry that we meet with are quite different. Logics are different, ethics might be different, completely different. I have been talking this topic in many places. I found the PD-1 is quite effective and response was so clear and I got the conviction that it will work for cancer. But none of the Japanese pharmaceutical company listened to me, including Ono Pharmaceutical. So I nearly determined to start up my own venture. I talked with America, and then American Venture said yes. So I talked to Japanese company and said, really, I am going to start my own venture. But it happens that the another American venture called the Medarex looked at the patents of the PD-1 laid open and found the name of Ono Pharmaceutical, which was the company of the co-applicant, and those two companies started the joint research between Ono and the Medarex. That was the starting point for the development. So Japanese pharmaceutical companies do not have the true eyes to disquinge the truth, in my opinion. So my recommendation what request to pharmaceutical companies in Japan, number one is to culture or cultivate the judging eyes to see the true seeds. And number two, two capital shortage. Well, the major pharma are the quite large. However, in Japan, 30 or more of the companies are making the business. That means even with a smaller scale in Japan, with some level of the sales, they can survive 
even today in Japan. But that is not guaranteeing the future. Life science, the gambling, so with the capital, if the more money, they will certainly win. If we don't have the capital enough, quite risky. So Japanese pharmaceutical companies should have the capital more. Number three, if the pharmaceutical companies can get the profit by using the seeds found with academia, then after the development completed, return should be flowed back to academia so that next generation of academia where researchers can be raised. In that context, win-win relationship will be realized. That type of attitude is required by Japanese pharmaceutical companies. Is that okay? Now, again, gentlemen, in the first line, Nishikawa from Asahi newspaper. Thank you. I was listening to the interviews, and you said that in life science, you have to reach out your hands into many, many factories, and you are still curious. Do you still have the interesting issues arena for your own research for future elucidation? If you have any research interest, please tell us. Number two, well, how can we raise and nurture the young, able researchers? Those two are the big issues in your questions. Number one first, my own interest to want to do is very much limited. I'm already 74 years old. I do not have the intention to start a new big project. So I will elucidate further the regulation of the PD-1 and the mechanism of AID or some application of AID. I would like to continue those. However, in the field of life science, we human beings don't know most of the life science. That means the seeds are everywhere, mountains of seeds. That is the world that we see, that is unknown world. Number two, that is the how to nurture the young researchers. We should create the environment that the researchers can freely use the fund for any type of research. It was quite unfortunate that the especially young researchers, they don't have money, no research grant. We were poor. However, we manually made many of the things in the research. However, in today, richer researcher can win just with phone, just asking for the DNA sequence. If you have money, then the results can be immediately obtained. So that means that if you do not have that capital, you cannot win in competition. In that aspect, in life science, today's younger researchers are quite in an unfavorable position. I have the sympathy. If on a pharmaceutical company can make, how should I say, for example, donate big money to establish the fund, then if that's realized, Young researchers can make free researches utilizing that fund. That is my wish. Thank you. Maybe we can entertain one more question. OK, these two people are starting from the person in front. I am Molly from Chunichi. Well, for even more younger generations who would like to study life science in the future, like children, what kind of message do you have for them? Well, when I was I'm asked to give the autograph. I always ask, what would you like to do? This Mr. Professor Shizuo Yamakawa, who came to, from Shizuoka University to Kyoto University, 
and now he's back in Shizuoka uh, University. This is my strong concept. The children have even more curiosity than adults, and they can find so many things that look very strange. And I advise them to keep looking at what you think mysterious and strange, and maintain this mind of finding something interesting or mysterious.